time we're talking about football. Todd McShay's latest mock draft is out, and while there are no changes to quarterback positioning, McShay has an interesting change in his top five after having uh, Alabama receiver Amari Cooper going to the Raiders at four in his previous mock draft. McShay, McShay has dropped Cooper to the Rams at 10. Now he has West Virginia wideout Kevin White going fourth overall to the Raiders after an impressive workout at the scouting combine. Uh, Skip Bayless, do you believe that uh, White should be the first receiver taken in the draft? Stephen A., I am 100% with Todd McShay on this. If, in fact, Oakland wants a wide receiver, I definitely would take Kevin White over Amari Cooper. Not to say that Amari Cooper is going to be a bad player. He's going to be a very, very good player. But Kevin White's going to be a little bit better. Just so you get this. August 30th, as this season opened, I'm sitting on my couch. I did not attend this game, so maybe it didn't count. Mm -hmm. But I am watching the opener at the Georgia Dome between Alabama and West Virginia. Alabama and West Virginia. And I kept saying, who is that? Who's that number 11 for West Virginia? My God, did you see that catch and that catch and that catch? He caught nine balls that day for 143 yards against Alabama. Then my Oklahoma Sooners on September 20th, that night, a Saturday night, went to West Virginia, and I kept saying, can you please get a couple of guys on number 11? He would go up and snatch balls out of the air, played so physically. He looked like he could run a little bit. I kept reading that, that his top end speed was questionable until he got to the combine, did number 11, Kevin White, and he ran 4-3-5 in the 40-yard dash at the combine at 6'3", 215 pounds. Wow. And I'm saying, well, that clinches it for me. If I'm the Raiders, I am taking Kevin White. Hands, leaping ability, and physicality that I did not see from Amari Cooper. And last quick point, it's been a lot mentioned, a lot written of late about Nick Saban products in the pros. 16 first round draft choices at Alabama since Nick took over. Only one all pro was Marcel Darius. So they've underperformed a little bit given their draft st status. Why is that? Maybe Nick Saban's such a great coach that he, he coaches the max out of them in college and they can't go much farther. They're as good as they'll ever get in college. I'm not saying that's Amari, but that would give me a little pause, a little bit pause. So I'm taking Kevin White over Amari Cooper. Skip Bayless, <clears throat> I'm not in much of a position to disagree with you. I watched West Virginia once this year, they played Oklahoma when they were ranked number four at the time. They lost 45 to 33. This is a team that in the two years, White has been there. They were four and eight and seven and six in the Big 12. Last year, uh, they lost, obviously, they lost their bowl game. They lost the Liberty Bowl game to Texas A&M. They had three consecutive losses against TCU, Texas, and Kansas State before winning uh, at Iowa State to end the regular season. I just look at them right now, seven and six, four and eight prior to that. He had 109 receptions, you know, for 1,400 plus yards, and that was impressive. But I'm thinking about Alabama. I'm thinking about Amari Cooper. I'm thinking about the SEC, which you rave about. I'm thinking about the 124 receptions. I'm thinking about the 1,700 yards. I'm thinking about the route running. I'm thinking about some of the catches. I'm thinking about the competition they're going against. I'm thinking about the quarterback he was working with in Blake Sims, who was, who was decent at times and other times wasn't but so impressive. And I think all of those things and how everybody was raving about Amari Cooper I'm going to go with the resume before I go with the scouting combine. And that's the only reason that I would stick with Amari Cooper. The resume tells me the level of competition, the pressurized moments, the fact that you were pretty much the lone passing option. Everybody knew you were. It's in the tough SEC. All guns are blazing in your direction. And somehow, someway, you still go out there and do what you did this year and get y'all to the national semifinal, I'm going to roll with that. I'm not knocking White. I'm not questioning his abilities. I mean, obviously, he's a little bit taller. That's a big thing. He's got about two inches. Love his body. Looks like he's ready for the NFL. He's got the speed, got the hands, all right? But those big moments when I saw Amari Cooper produce, to me, he's somebody that I can trust on the next level. I look at White at West Virginia, 
kind of year they've had the last couple of years, even though he was big time this last year when they won seven and six? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I believe in him, and I think that he will be, he has the potential to be great. But in terms of my comfort level, I'm looking at what I've seen from Amari Cooper skip. I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't fade from that, bro. I can't. No. I just can't do it. Listen, seriously, you make good points. I cannot defend West Virginia's one loss records. Kevin White couldn't make that mm -hmm. much of a difference with Clint Trickett throwing to him. And Amari Cooper was Jerry Rice-like in college, and that's the highest compliment I can pay. But listen, when Blake Sims got hot, he got crazy hot. He threw a lot of good balls to Amari Cooper, who split a lot of zones and just made people look silly. And, and I, I like his hands. I like his big game poise and presence. I and, give and you all that. Running. What's, and route running. He's beautiful. Just be, That's why I say he's Jerry Rice-like to me. There's just something about the physicality of the NFL game that a Des Bryant brings where you're just so physical and you just, you just leap above people and snatch balls out of the sky. Kevin White can right. do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's Des, but okay. he's, he's like that. Mm -hmm. He plays that way where you just you could put two, two people on him and they're just going to scratch and claw and he's just going to rise above them and hip check them off and snatch balls. I, I, again, I, I get where Todd is going. I was pleasantly yeah. surprised well, by this. Well, the scouts are saying, and I was yep. reading about him, they were saying that when he worked out during the combine, he was a freak. They hadn't seen yeah. anything like yeah. it. Go ahead, Stephen A. Well, keep in mind. Keep in mind, when you have an Amari Cooper, you might want an experienced quarterback because his route running will come into play. Yeah. Skip makes a valid point about White when you consider the fact that Carr is relatively young. Yeah. We are talking about the Oakland Raiders here. So you might need somebody with just the athleticism yeah. to go uh, up during and get the combine. it because it might work because of the young quarterback. Yeah. Kevin White says uh, he doesn't feel that there's a receiver that can do anything that he can do. Not trying to be cocky. He thinks <laughs> he's the best there it is. Got to think that way. Oh, well. Coming up next, 30 points in less than five minutes. There's a Florida State freshman that feels really good about himself this morning. What <laughs> happened in that game? Uh, we talk about it in just a few moments. ESPN First Take is brought to you by Wendy's, proud sponsor of the 2015 John R. Wooten Men's Player of the Year Award. AT&T, mobilizing your world. And Nissan, innovation that excites. Florida State's uh, Xavier Rattan Mays scored 30 points in the final four minutes uh, of an 81-77 loss to Miami. The freshman scored all but three of the Seminoles' final points. All but three. Skip Bayless, how impressed were you by him? Well, th this was staggering, Stephen A., but I must say, to be honest, it was a shocking aberration for this kid, and he is a pure freshman, but he was shooting 25% from three going into this game. And he made exactly. six out of six in the last four and a half minutes. I mean, welcome to the twilight zone. Mm -hmm. He's he's a good player and he'll get better. But this was uh, a little little shocking. One thing I will say is that moments like that ultimately can elevate you to another level yep. because it builds your confidence. What he should be doing from here on out is shooting about two to three hundred jump shots yep. a day, working on his shot because he's got to continue to improve on that because some more nights like that could happen. Yep. But that was sensational on his part. Sure it was, was his night. You're in agreement. We were very much impressed by you, young lad. We'll see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, ESPN2, right here. Have a good one.